Stanja Belisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, here to answer a question from a viewer which uh, has offered or put forth several very good questions of late in regards to ham radio antenna systems. In particular, why this choice of 50 ohms non-reactive non-reactive or purely resistive. Why that choice as the standard or the convention for the output of most ham radio transmitters. Now you may sometimes also hear this as uh, quoted as uh, 52 ohms, which actually comes a little closer to the perfection as I will try to explain it to you, at least why I think this choice was originally made among all the other choices that might have been available. It's pretty evident that uh, the best kind of a load in any situation is a non-reactive load, a purely resistive load. That means no capacitive reactants, no inductive reactants. But why 50 or 52 ohms? Well, the first reason that I'd like to offer is uh, it has to be somewhere in that ballpark if you're going to use coaxial cable as your transmission line. This is basically what coaxial cable looks like. You have a braided wire on the outside which is in a tubular or cylindrical shape like a long, long hose. Then you have a center conductor which comprises a wire of a gauge that can vary anywhere from about, I guess, AWG number 24 or even 26 down to AWG number 10 or, in some cases, uh, specialized uh, transmission lines even bigger than that. And then there are these uh, conductors, the outer conductor, which is typically grounded by the way and the center conductor which carries the signals is separated by this dielectric dielectric basically means uh, a material that separates two electric poles and keeps them apart and usually that uh, material is polyethylene. So it turns out that when you manufacture a cable like that, the characteristic impedance that you're going to get, and I, uh, I believe I've explained that in some other videos, but it would be a good topic for a video sometime, the characteristic or Z sub zero of such a, a cable generally ranges between about oh the, the the lowest that you can make it in practice is about uh, maybe 30 ohms. And the highest that you can make it in practice, pardon me, is about um, maybe 120 ohms or so. So 50 ohms falls into this general ballpark and it's pretty easy to make coaxial cable uh, of reasonable dimensions that has this 50 or 52 ohm impedance. Now the cable that you find in a, a community antenna television system or any other kind of system where you're connecting a television set to a satellite modem or anything like that Usually those uh, are 75 ohm uh, characteristic impedances. But ham radio seems to have gone with 50 ohms, 
which is right in the middle, you know, right in the ballpark of where it's pretty easy to make a cable like that. If you want to try to make something less than 30 ohms, you've got to make the center conductor so big in respect to the to the braid that they're almost touching. Uh, and in fact, you probably will have to make them come into contact. You probably just can't do it in practice. It's just not practical. For 120 ohms, that center conductor would either have to be such a fine wire or the cable would have to have such a large diameter that it would become un unwieldy. So that uh, will end uh, part one of my video. Uh, uh, not, and it's not a trilogy. It's going to be like a duology of why 50 ohms has been chosen as the standard impedance for ham radio systems. Stan Jubilisco signing off for now. Look for part two. It'll be in a playlist, by the way, called Ham Radio 2. And it will follow this video in the, in the roster in that list. You can also probably do a search on my YouTube channel to find it. 73, and so long for the moment.